All right, welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about integral personal development. I think this is kind of a synthesis of all I've been thinking about and learning when it comes to personal development. So let's jump into it. So I think a powerful way of framing personal development is this. You can separate your personal development effort into two rough areas, bottom up versus top down personal development. Now let's look at it more in detail. Let's start with bottom up. Bottom up personal development works like this. You start where you are at, then you start fixing things that you can fix so that your life becomes more stable and doesn't derail. And then you start maintaining the things that you can maintain so that again, like your life doesn't go back into a situation where it's fragile. And then you start slowly improving the systems that you have built. Let's look at the, let's look at what I was able to think of that works this way. On one hand, you have your body. Your body needs sleep, nutrition and fitness. This is something that you need no matter your life situation. You always start from the bottom. You always have to go back and sleep. If you want to improve or strengthen your body, you always have to go back to the basics. Then you have your mind, which is obviously depending on your body, but there are things that you can do specifically to nurture the mind. So for example, meditation, gratitude, loving kindness, and there are maybe some other states of mind that you can practice. And then there is the more skillful aspect like learning, thinking and creating or expressing. These are things that you can practice about your mind, no matter what situation you are in. Then there is your household. Uh, your household needs some order, some cleanliness mainly so that you can actually live and function within it. And then once you have that established, you can actually go on and even beautify it. So that's another aspect of your life that you can work on bottom up. Your relationship work in a similar way. At the very minimum, if you want to say that you have a relationship, you have to keep on in touch with someone so that they know that they are still part of your life in a way. Um, next step is to sync up, uh, meaning that you meet and you tell each other your stories so that you're part of the same story. And if through the sync up process, you notice that you have common values, common projects, the, the opportunity to travel together in this journey of life, then you can start doing that and, and, and do and start the project together. And if you think about it, if there is a craft that you want to master, it works the same there. Like you start with the basics, then you become fluent, you slowly develop your own style and you become a master at that. Now there are some tools that you can use for bottom up personal development. And I would say the core playing ground that you're playing with when it comes to bottom up personal development, it's habits, because these are like the very foundation, you need a lot of maintenance and you need a lot of time. You need to build the right habits. And from what I've learned, the most powerful tool that you can use to build and maintain and tweak your habits are routines, meaning lists of steps recipes, if you will, that you perform on a daily, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a regular basis anyway, that achieve certain effects and that you do consciously and that you kind of maintain at a higher level that you can then tweak to achieve stronger effect as you learn what is effective and what is not. And that's the other point. The, the idea of marginal improvement is very powerful. Instead of thinking about revolutionizing your life tomorrow, you should start where you're at and then constantly marginal improve all uh, little aspects of this kind of flower that is slowly unfolding, which is your bottom up life, if you will. Now, that's not the only way one can go about personal development. There is also the top down approach. Admittedly, I've been thinking less about that way of approaching life, but it's definitely a possibility. And there are things that one can kind of discover that I would argue belong to this top-down approach. So on one hand, you can think deeply about your identity and what really defines you. One part of your identity will be your values. What are really your values and how should those define what you aim at and what you do in life? Another thing that you could do is discover your vision. And by vision, I don't mean necessarily something that you can achieve, but or, or that is even conceivably achieved, but really like, okay, if you had infinite time, infinite energy, infinite possibilities, what would the end goal be of this thing that's called life? What would you like to achieve? So what, what is the best possible good for you? This kind of thing is a top-down approach and it can help you orient your life. On a little lower level, you have your goals, things that you actually believe you could, at least in principle, achieve. They might be very ambitious, 
but still they are still conceivable to do some you could do a personality test and discover what really defines you and then based on that orient your actions and life and then designing a strategy so if you have some goals how are you going to get there so if you have a map and this is where you want to go how are you going to move through the territory one tool that is useful in this area is called backward goal setting so you design your goal five, five years from now and you go back okay what does that imply for in one year from now where do i have to be one month from now where do i have to be one week from now and what does that imply for today what do i have to do today some more tools one that i advocate for i, I haven't been talking about it much lately but still it's extremely powerful is imaginative exercises there, there is this tool called active imagination uh, coined by Jung that you can use to kind of communicate with your unconscious or with your right brain side which is the more creative pattern matching intuitive thing and um, if you kind of go in this imaginative state you will get some information that you wouldn't get if you just think rationally and logically and analytically another top-down approach that is very powerful is the commitment ritual if, if you say okay now I've designed my strategy or I found a goal, I really want to be sure that I will follow through on that, that I won't change direction. Then there are some videos that I made about that. You can really do a ritual that will provide the powerful motivational force so that uh, you don't give up midway. Something else that can be useful is to, if you're go following the top-down approach, is to go until the very bottom, with, which means saying, okay, if, you, if I want to achieve this goal, what would the routines be that I need to follow if I want to achieve it? So what would I need to do on a daily basis? So at this point, the question is, what is the right approach? Should I go bottom-up or should I go top-down? What is, what is right? And the answer is that obviously it's both. You really need both. And there are good reasons for that. There are some synergies that happen if you do both things at the same time. So for example, if you follow the top-down approach, it might give you a direction or a way to measure whether you're making progress while you're going bottom-up. So you know where up is if you have a vision of the future. For example, if we talk about cleaning your house and making, more, making it more functional, functional to do what to achieve what right it can help to have at least a vague idea of the direction in which you want to go another synergy could be that okay you you want to have a goal and you define it but then as you practice going towards it you discover something else that you actually enjoy doing more and that affects your long-term goal and so that's a way how the bottom-up approach influences the top down and eventually Probably the most integrated approach is really to have both at the same time and have the kind of a current going up and the current going down and, and they both influence each other at all levels. And so I was looking for a name for an approach to anything that involves both top down and bottom up at the same time. And the only thing I found was the word integrative in a paper. And so I'm going to roll with that. And let, so let's call this integrative personal development. This is what it is about. It's uh, going about personal development consciously, both from the bottom up and from the top down. That's it for today. Uh, I hope this was useful. This has been kind of a summary of many things I've been thinking about in the last year or so about personal development that it integrates different aspects. So thank you very much for watching and see you another time. Bye.